What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for some more content for you guys. We are at the 17th of January. Still no signings, but we are, um, you know, getting, Don't to, tell the, Daigle. Yeah, Don't don't tell tell getting <laughs> to the business end of the transfer window. So we're going to be doing a transfer tier list for you guys today. You know what time it is. You excited for this one? So a bunch of players again, we're not going to sign. Pretty much. Let's yeah, go. I'm much. ready. So we have 18 players here, all players that we have been linked with through the duration of the January transfer window and before, to be honest. But we've got four tiers for you this time. This time. We've got Must Sign, who is obviously players that walk straight uh, into our team have become a very valuable asset for us. We've got first team players who, um, yeah, just the tier below must sign, but do uh, get in and amongst the first team. We've got backup, who obviously uh, does what it says on the tin. And we've got stay away, also does what it says on the tin. We're just players that we just don't want to sign here at Tottenham Hotspur. Um, but look, you excited? Very excited. Let's go. I'm, let's I'm ready it. for it. I've uh, split them up in positions as well. So let's start off with the goalkeepers. And the first player we're going to look at is Dean Henderson. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think uh, he probably goes to... Um, he probably, if we sign him, he's challenging Lloris for, for the number one spot. So it's difficult. I think if we signed him now in January, he's a backup. Yeah. But if we sign him in the summer, probably first team. I think... I think even if we signed him in the summer, if Hugo Lloris signs that contract, he's still a backup. Mm. Um, I think he only become he he kind of, for me, he's backup with a with a view to first team in a year or two. Yeah, exactly. It depends if, if Lloris what the happens with the contract and stuff. I still think. Um, all right, we'll put him back up then. We'll put him back up just because he he probably sits just behind Lloris for now. Yeah. All right. So Dean Henderson, you go into backup. Next up is Jordan Pickford. Stay away from me. Yeah, not, yeah. I'd rather we, we don't sign him, sign someone else. Because I think Pickford's not coming to sit on the bench. He's mm -hmm. not coming to uh, challenge Lloris. He probably wants to be number one. And I don't think he's good enough to be number one right now at Tottenham. So um, he's not going to be a backup. So stay away. Yeah, agreed. Jordan Pickford. Although he's done well for England. but he, does, he has done well for England, but... Too many uh, shortcomings for Everton, in my opinion. Is that a short joke? Because he's only because <laughs> what's he no only pun six intended foot. there? But right, yeah, he doesn't no, stay away. Uh, Lengley, Clement Lengley for Barcelona. I know he's a player that you like. I like him a lot. Yeah, first team for me. I don't think he's a must sign just because his performance has been pretty patchy of late for um, Barcelona. But I actually think in terms of what we need, he's pretty perfect that left side of centre back role. I think he'd do a great job there. Um, but just because and I think he's at a good age as well and he's um I think he's like mid 20s so I think it'd be a very good signing I just don't think he's one where he he comes with like very like he comes with a bit of risk just because re recently he's made a few mistakes for Barca but I would put him in first team yeah the thing is with Langley if you looking at our squad right now he's he will, I think he gets into our first team right now as it stands ahead yeah. of Ben Davis but when you're looking at other targets, you know, we're going to talk about a player in a second who's who's next up on the list. If you're talking about one or the other, I think it's a no brainer, to be honest, whether it's him or like someone like De Vrij. Yeah, like, but he's a left side. But I still put Lingley as a first team. Yeah, as it stands right now, I would agree. No, even if we sign other centre back, because left side, he's on the left side of centre back role, mm. unless we sign another left side of centre back, yeah. then he's the best, I think. And then Lingley would, would go in. He would go in, but I would still prefer to focus on maybe other targets that maybe aren't in this tier list. But as it look, as it stands, he, he he gets into our first team, so he has to go into first yeah. team, surely. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I said, first team. All right, Langley goes into first team. De Vrij must sign, surely. Yeah, I think he immediately improves our defence. He's got, he's played with Conte before. He, he I know he's 29, but he has a lot of experience. Um, and also, I think he gets in there probably in the, in the in the central spot ahead of Dyer. And yeah, I think he's a must sign. I think it, it make it it com makes complete sense. I think he's yeah. a fantastic defender. <laughs> Not only does he. Um improve on Dyer, but he massively improves on that it's not like just a slight improvement it's um it's a signing that obviously Antonio Conte won the league with him um he's competent at both in the central role and the left-sided role as well and I think that um yeah he just massively improves our defense so he has to be a must sign yeah Stefan De Vrij um next up is Lazio's Emmanuel Lazari uh, left right wing back so it's, a, it's an interesting one because he might go into the first team just because you could argue he's better than Emerson. But Lazari is probably the kind of right back you want as a backup in a weird way. 
uh, like I think you want him and someone better than him as on on the right. So he comes in as a first team, but I'd want him as a backup. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, but the thing is, it's just that we are we're at where we're at. You know what I mean? So if he comes in, he comes in as a first teamer, doesn't he? So. He has to, I mean, f for this kind of purpose of this video, he has to go in first team, surely. Yeah, I guess first team. Which, yeah, which is... Because he's challenging Emerson, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. I think he's, he's... As it stands, he's a better player than Emerson. Yeah, probably. You'd have to argue. But Emerson's still young. All but... right. Uh, Adama Traore next up. Also, for, I, don't, I wouldn't put him in my sign, but I think first team, for sure. I think he starts... I think he's a starter on the right. Again, I think he's better than Emerson with the attributes that he has. If he was coming in as like in the attacking options, I would put him as maybe backup. backup. Yeah, backup as an attacker, but first team as a right wing back. Yeah, that's what I would say. Even though we've never seen him play right wing back before. Yeah, <laughs> but still, yeah, I think with his attributes, I think he goes into first, I think he goes into first team. Okay, Adama Traore into first team. Uh, Ivan Perisic backup, backup, backup. Good winger. Good player, but um, I don't, like he plays on the left. I don't think he's getting in there right now ahead of uh, Regulon potentially or Sessegnon, who are who like a bit more defensively sound. But I think in certain games he might want like a full swinger there. So I think he goes into um, backup. Yeah, I'd a complete agree, and I think he would be a brilliant backup as well. He would be um, an addition to the squad that will um, add quality off the bench, really. Mm. So yeah, I think he would be a very good backup, even Perisic. He goes into backup alongside Dean Henderson. Next up is Weston McKenney of Juventus. Scored a goal on the weekend, uh, playing really well for Juve. Uh, where would you put him? Yeah, he's a good player. I guess he goes into first team again. Yeah, a lot of them. Are, yeah, I mean he's not, again. He's he's a really good player, but there are there are probably options for a similar price range you can get who are better than him. So that's why I wouldn't put him in my sign. So it probably goes into first team for me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's getting a bit boring. We're just agreeing with everything here. But I think, yeah, Weston McKenney, uh, I really rate him as a player. And I think, yeah, he goes straight into the first team. I think that he gets in there ahead of probably Hoybier and Skip, to be honest, right now. Yeah, but it's, it's hard to judge because I'm the last, recently by his last five games, they've been struggling. But um, at the moment, he probably does, yeah. But I think Hoybier and Skip are, you know, are better than they've been showing recently. Mm. All right, Weston McKenney into first team. Um, Brozovic, where would you put him? Again, first team, surely. Yeah, because in terms of the, he's a, he offers something in the team that we like. He he would be challenging like Winks for that position. That's someone who can dictate the play and have it like get the get like. Um, get some passing movement movement going and stuff like that so yeah you have to be first team would you put him in must sign Brozovic I wouldn't put him in must sign only because he's a good really good player but he's he's uh, 29 years of age now um he's although he's playing really well I think there are options there in his position where like Brozovic isn't one of those players where if any under any circumstance you have to bring him in like he's one of those players where he's a position we need, but I wouldn't put, I wouldn't say he's a, a, someone who we should be desperate to get. Mm. I think uh, he's an actual top quality player. Um, if he was a few years younger, he probably would go into must sign. But Antonio Conte also was was talking his in his I don't know if it was in the embargoed section or the press conference talking about how um, experienced players could could make all the difference, mm -hmm. and um, he could be one of those. Yeah, for sure. And I'd, I'd definitely in, uh, like him at the, in the. I'd like him to come, but I don't think he's a essential signing. All right, we'll put him in first uh, team. Brozovic, uh, not must sign first team. Next up is Kessi, Frank Kessi of AC Milan. Yeah. Um, rumors have been uh, cycling around Kessi for a while. Contract up at the end of the season. For me, um, he goes into must sign. I agree. He's perfect, age-wise, quality-wise, form, uh, position. Now that's the kind of player that you that you that you're desperate to get, and he's he's going to be hot property. And he's one if it's if it's available, you get him in. 
Yeah, and for for his age, uh, for the price as well, with his contract running out, it's an absolute no-brainer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolute no-brainer. You've got to bring a player like Frank Kessie in. You just have to. Definitely. So he goes into must-sign. Next one's going to be interesting. Christian Eriksen. Mm, could go... I wouldn't put him in must-sign, but you could put him in the other three. I'd put him in backup, to be honest. I think yeah, I'm leaning know. towards yeah, I'm leaning towards backup rather than I don't to be honest, I don't yeah, I wouldn't put him in first team either. It's you stay away. Guarantee. It's stay away or it's backup because I don't think stay away. I think backup. I only think it's not stay away if it's uh like a like a what what Brentford are reportedly doing a six month deal with an option of another year. Yeah. I, think, I wouldn't give him like a two-year deal or three-year deal. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But I think because of the quality he's shown in the past, um, yes, we all know what happened to him in, in the summer and stuff like that, and there's definitely risks to it. But if you sign him on up on a short-term deal, I think the risk versus reward kind of out... The, the, the risk for the reward outweighs the kind of the bad. All right, we'll put him in back up then. I think it could be a good option as odd to being off the bench mm -hmm. in, in, in circumstances as well. All right, Christian Eriksen, you're going into backup. Next one is Usman Dembele. Again, I'm actually torn between the bottom two. I don't. Backup will stay away. Yeah, I, I just. As much as I think he's got so much quality, his injury record, his wages. Attitude, apparently. At it, like these things count against him. Quality wise, he might. Even, we could even go into Masai and quality wise, but. The other things really count against him, especially the injury record. So, so we want another um, Undombele situation on our hands. Exactly. I'm, oh, I think probably maybe he was, oh. I've said before that I want him to come and I'm not against him coming, uh, especially because he could be on a free as well. Mm. But he'd be on big, big wages. Um, and I don't know if we want another situation where we have someone in the squad. Yeah, if, if you're bringing him in, he can't be a backup in the, with those wages. So stay away then. He has to be stay away. So stay away. Yeah. Usman Dembele, you're going into stay away. Next one is Dejan Kulusevski. Yeah, he'd be a first teamer, 100%. He's versatile. He's uh, he'd definitely get a lot of minutes in the front line, whether it's Son or for Lucas or even down the centre sometimes. So he'll get a lot of game time. He'll definitely be challenging the first team, and he'll be starting a lot of games. So yeah, he'd be in first team. Um, obviously, he's a player that Paratici and uh, Paratici knows very well. Uh, brought him to Juventus. Um, he's a player with high quality and a high ceiling, uh, in my opinion. Um, right now, does he come in and does is he better than than Lucas Moura right Essentially. now? Essentially, do you think so? Yeah, mm, I'm just not sure. Um, Kulusevski. To be honest, I haven't seen him play enough. I've seen bits and pieces, and every time I've seen him play, he has impressed me. But Lucas Moura has been one of our be best players this season. I guess he has to go into first team because he's not a backup. Yeah, you're probably right. First team for Kulusevski. Next one is Jesse Lingard. I was thinking backup, but now I'm thinking stay away. Because I just don't... Because he's 29. I know he had a good year last season at um, West Ham. I'll take him on a six-month loan deal or six-short-term deal now. But... He's going to want decent wages. He's a, it's a position where you want fresher faces, I think, in the, in that position for what we need. And I wouldn't want Jesse Lingard as part of the squad for next season. Like, if you're asking me in the summer, we're like, who I want to sign, Lingard wouldn't be on the list. And I just think if we gave him a three-year deal, and after one year it's not working out, we're a bit stuck. Mm. So I think stay away. Mm. I don't want him, to be honest. One. I just don't really want him. I'm not... I mean, I, I, right now, in January, he would be a decent option just because we had short numbers. But I don't know. I just feel like it's a deal that wouldn't end well. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. Um, the only thing is, with the quality he has, with the quality that we have in our squad, I think that he'll definitely at least get on the bench every time. You know, um, he adds goals, he adds assists. He saw that at West Ham at the back end of last season, one of the best players in the Premier League for the last six months of the season, or oh, last three months of the season. Not really cutting it in Man United. I think that if he was to come, um, I actually think he would have a role to play. Um, I think as a role to play as a backup. When you're looking at players like him versus, let's say, a Steven Bergvine, He'll definitely contribute more on the goal tally and the goal front and the goal contributions to Steven Bergman. Well, you say that. I mean, he only because of his form uh, last year of West Ham, but uh, but based on any other time in the last, let's say, three years, you wouldn't say that. 
You're, you're basically I'm on that the... six-month period. Yeah, but even when he's got on the pitch for Man United this season, um, he hasn't got on the pitch much, but he does contribute uh, with, you know, mm. chips in with a few goals and assists here and there. He does. I just I just think we should be looking for a different kind of player. That, that West Ham period was the only time, what, since Jose Mourinho was at Man United where he played a consistent run of games. Uh, I guess. No, I think he had. He just wasn't playing well, so he kept getting dropped. So, I don't know. Look, I... <laughs> I think stay away. I kind of flirt in between stay away and backup, to be honest. I mean, I don't want him as a first teamer. I wouldn't mind him as a backup, but then I wouldn't mind us staying away from him either, mm. to be honest. That's what I'm saying. So, I'm thinking stay away. Yeah, if you don't mind staying away, I guess you've got to put mm. him in stay away. So Jesse Lingard goes in stay away. Anthony Martial. I'll put him in backup. I think he could be a good backup striker. I think he would, I think he could contribute to goals, although, you know, things have really fallen flat for him at United, uh, really badly, which is which definitely counts against him. Still young-ish. six, yeah. Yeah, he's still young-ish. Still got time on the side. He's got bags of ability, like more, much more than like Lingard does, I think. Mm. Um, so I'd, I'd, I think he'd be a good backup, but he's unhappy at United because he's a backup, so... I mean, look, again, he's similar to Usman Dembele. Like, he's got quality. He's got enough quality to be a first-team player for us, 100%. I think he's got much more ability in front of goal than someone like Lucas does. Um, but it's whether he has that attitude to really fight his way into the first team. If, for me, it's either first... It's... I'm going to go with backup. Backup? Yeah. Interesting. I'm just checking to see what his... Um weekly salary is because it must be big because they signed him for a lot of money um just give me i can't i can't find it but um oh here we go 250 grand a week Nah, is that how much he's on yeah i'll oh, so stay away then that's got to be stay in. away i mean the guy has he's got attitude problems if he doesn't um get into the first team at spurs then it's probably uh gonna end badly with martial i mean to be honest in terms of the attitudes of the two players, I think I might prefer Lingard over Martial. I'm not saying that Lingard's mm. attitude is amazing or anything, but in terms of Martial's attitude, I think I would prefer Lingard, to be honest. So Martial, for me, is a stay away. All right, I didn't realise he was on that big wages. I thought it was about 100 and something, but if it's on 250, can't match that. No. Nah. All right, Martial, stay away. All right, we know when the next one's going. Dusan Vlahovic. Must side. Yeah, he goes straight into Mustang. Definitely. The striker that we need to challenge Cade and, and, and support the first team. He's unbelievable goal scoring record in Serie A. Really good age, 21 years of age. You're signing a striker potentially, especially for the profile. Could be for another 10 years if, if things go well. So uh, Vlahovic is must sign for me. Completely agree. Um, smashing up the Serie A. Um, absolutely brilliant player. I mean, he's got everything, doesn't he? He's got everything. He can hold the ball up. He's got a bit of pace. He's got trickery. Um, he's good on the ball. Deadly finisher. I mean, the guy is, is he's, you know, he's the guy, uh, hot property at the moment. He's mm -hmm. the name on everyone's uh, lips at the moment. So Dusan Vlahovic, you know, there's probably should be a tier above must sign and Vlahovic goes into there. But yeah, he's a must sign. And last but not least is uh, Karim Adiemi of RB Salzburg. Yeah, young striker. Reg I think. I think first team. To be honest, he's probably a backup right now because I don't think he comes in in the same way as Vlahovic comes in and demands game and demands like a spot alongside Kane as much as Vlahovic would. But, but because he's so young and he's got such a high ceiling, good record yeah. and high ceiling. I, I feel bad putting him in backup, but I think right now Vlahovic like his age though. Yeah, he would probably would be a backup, but yeah. I'd want. But you'd want him. But you want him really badly. He's 19 years old, mm. so I think a backup, but with a view to being a very key player to the future of Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. The thing is, if he played another league, you might even put him a must sign. But because but if he goes to the German him. league, I think that is a must sign. Yeah. But to the Premier League, he's going to take time to adapt. Yeah. Doesn't come in like Vlahovic has proven in a in a good league, mm. unlike Adiemi, who although. You know, uh, Salzburg have them, exactly man. got great talent coming through there. So you got to think that you know you should bring him in. But look at um, players like I think who who else came from the Salzburg to the Premier League? Minamino, right? He was smashing it up as well yeah. in, the, 
in the Austrian league. I don't think he's a bad player, Minamino. No, I'm not saying he's a bad player, but obviously it's taken him time uh, to really adjust to life in the Premier Dakar League. Dakar hasn't quite hit the ground running, but he's not doing badly. Yeah. Um, so take him time. I just, yeah, I guess back up for now. Mm. All right, Adi Amy goes into backup. So that is our completed tier list. Mm. Um, in stay away, we've got Jordan Pickford, Usman Dembele, Jesse Lingard, and Tony Martial. In backup, we've got Dean Henderson, Ivan Perisic, Christian Eriksen, and Karim Adiemi. In first team, we've got Lengle, Lazari, Adama Traore, Weston McKenney, Brozovic, and Kulusevsky. And then must sign, we've got Devry, Kessi, and Vlahovic. Man, can you imagine if we sign those three players? <laughs> We're signing any of these players. Oh, we'll man. see. We have to wait and see what January brings. But look, uh, 13, 14 days left, two weeks. Not, you know, time is ticking. We better get a move on because... Tick-tuck. Exactly, exactly. We've got to get a move on big time because time's running out and we need signings. So what's your prediction? How many are we going to get in? <sighs> two. Yeah, I'm saying two as well. I've said two from the beginning of the window. Um, I think Adama will come in. I think Adama is one. I mean, it all makes sense now. Wolves have signed a um, a uh, winger, so that frees up a space for Adama to go. And I just think I think it's going to get done this week, to be honest, Adama. Yeah, with Bergwijn going out, probably. Yeah, unfortunately. And then remains to be seen what else uh, we're going to buy. But Romano was interesting. What he was saying, he was saying that if we get these two play these Undombeles, Ali's, and and stuff like that out, and Bergwijn out, then we're really going to be um, focusing on a centre-back and Conte wants a centre-back as soon as possible. Yes, so. always. That's always the situation, though. I'm sure before in the summer, if we would have got rid of the Don Bale, we would have got more signings, but we yeah. didn't. And I think it could be a very similar situation in January. Probably. But that is the situation. That is our tier list. I want to know what your thoughts are on the tier list. Who would you put in each section? Let me know in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.